and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and some very good late night. We have a global audience of uh, lead, uh, leaders today. I'm Cheno, and welcome to 45 Possible. I will take five minutes to set the business context before I hand over to our stalwarts for a dem demo. The global pandemic has forced us to be in what seems like an ever evolving challenge. At an individual level, it has been hard working from home, small kids, homeschooling. In fact, our marketing team had to organize this event working in some of the harshest lockdown conditions. So thank you team. If you like the event, do show your appreciation by sending your feedback. While it has been hard at individual level, stock markets are going strong, real estate prices are going up. In fact, some countries will re record, record GDP growth. The common finding in all research is that most business leaders expect 2021 to be a growth year. And I believe the reason is rapid changes in the market. Rapid changes present significant opportunity for businesses. Business leaders, some of you are here, are capitalizing or looking to capitalize on these rapid changes in the market. The silver lining is that a lot of businesses are finding new and faster ways to adapt. I believe rapid change is why enterprises are embracing web, the leading enterprise application platform, especially insurance, public sector, telcos, healthcare, manufacturing, and now banks and education. WEM helps uh, enterprise capitalize on these rapid changes. And like talking about rapid changes, um, say take the case of a change request for co-banking or ERP or any of your courts. What if that can be shortened from four months to one week and further changes can be done on demand? What if your digital transformation can be accelerated significantly? All your application modernization projects can be shortened by 80% from six, seven years to one or two years. And what if there can be a predictable cost of tapping unlimited innovation within your organization and your partner network? Or you can have unlimited automation built within your organization with a predictable cost. Uh, these are some of the areas where WEM can be used right now and where partners and large enterprises are using WEM. In fact, 2021 is turning out to be a year of reinvention and software industry is going through the same. And WEM is one of the companies leading this change. The areas where we are really changing the software industry is one, reducing the learning curve. So you can build a medium level complexity application in WEM in six weeks time. Collapsing multiple skills into one row front end, back end, data, DevOps, iOS, Android, all that can be done by one WEM developer so that you don't have to run out of resources, but also you can do much more with the same resources. Simple to use, one interface where you can build your web and mobile apps. And for the first time in the software industry, real-time preview and real-time publishing. So you can see what you're doing and you can check any time at any stage of the development. The, the outcome is, as expected, super fast speed to market, higher quality and productivity, and around one third of what you would be spending currently. And on to some of the housekeeping rules. Thank you. I've got some of the feedbacks. So I appreciate that. So if you can key in your questions in the chat box and one of our experts, Martin, would be responding near real time. Korean language questions, yes, we can answer that. We have, a, we have a number of participants from Korea. Thank you, welcome. Our very handsome uh, VP for Channel Sales, David Lee will be responding if you put your questions in Korean. And yes, we also have a Japanese brochure. So if you can uh, put in your request, we can send you those brochure. And our team is available for extended questions if required, but we would love to schedule a follow-up call or a demo if, uh, if you are interested, just drop us an email and you'll know where, where to go. And very quickly today, taking us through this uh, developments uh, experience, are Des, Bo and Martin. 
they are all have very uh, varied experience in IT as well as in business. But the common thing is that they've all fallen in love with WEM in the last two to three years. So that's has over 30 years in business and process consulting, and primarily in the telco vertical. Bo has over 30 years again in IT delivery management, managing multiple countries, large program rollout. They have dabbled in program, maybe the last century, <laughs> the early 90s. Uh, Martin is the one who has done a lot of IT development, over 25 years of IT development experience. And he has started some very successful IT development houses. So yeah, the common theme is they all love WEM. So anyone can build awesome applications on WEM. And I'll be honest, watching a software being developed is not as exciting as watching a soccer match. Match. So hence we are finishing the whole development in half the time, okay, 45 minutes. Uh, and I hope as you go through this experience, you can visualize the possibilities within your organization with WEM. I'm excited about the news about the, all the vaccines being rolled out and travel being opened up uh, in some places, I'm looking forward to meeting some of you in person in the next few quarters. So thank you very much again and enjoy this awesome feed from three of our experts. So I'll hand you over to Bo. Okay. Bo, over to you. And welcome to you all. My name is Bo. Today we shall create an application if we can get the screen up. Thank you, Des. We're going to create an application for invoicing with the common functions of line items, payments, receipts, etc. And we will perform an integration to a simulated payment gateway application at the end. As in cooking shows, we have prepared ingredients in shape of database structures, templates, and what we call helper flowcharts, which reduces what can be boring and repetitive. These helper flowcharts basically move data around, such as from database to form or vice versa. Now, as mentioned, please use the chat box. Martin will be there to assist you. And Des will focus on the construction. Q&As will be in the end of this application discussions. So please go ahead, Des. Hi, I am Des. Yes, I am the mouse man. <laughs> Welcome to this webinar in which we will show how WEM can be used to do, build an application with ease and speed. As Bo has mentioned, we have prepared the data model and some helper flowcharts, simply because they're repetitive in creating the database in each of the data fields and in moving data from one location to another. Also, we have been through the process of thinking the design and the architecture that is needed for this application. This cannot be avoided with any development of an application. The focus now will be on building the core logic needed for this application. It's not to see how fast I can type without making any mistakes, but to show how WIM makes it easy to accelerate the development of an application. Okie dokie, let's get ourselves started. <coughs> Okay, so what we see in front of us is the modeler's developer layout. On top, we have a toolbar. On the left, we have our organization of flowcharts, database, navigations, normal folder layouts. On the right side, we'll see a list of properties, for example, parameters that apply to each of the elements available for building the user interface. These can be used to set conditions, change styles, and take actions, etc. Now we've used a project template downloaded from the WEM app store, which provides basic structures for building an app, including a fully functioning authentication module that provides for user account setup, login authentication, user role definitions, etc. Now, as we have here a, an interaction node, we approach the user interface that is seen on our website. On the left, we built this view of what is in our database now. And on the right, we will be building the input form to get customer details from the user to save in our database.
when we choose our database, we may have a, a huge number of information, but we can choose what to show. Here on the right side, we choose what would be visible for our user. Building up a form, a temporary form as an input field that can be saved to our database after. And we can choose when the various items should be visible for the end user, depending on the input and other fields. And then the button here, uh, the interaction from the end user can utilize either to save or to cancel our standard information needed for building customer database. Now back to our flowchart, we are taking the input from the customer details, and moving and saving to the database by connecting this flowchart when they were the user have chosen to save the input. Yeah. Now, Des has added himself as a user in this application. So when he does the testing later, you yeah. will see that he is already logged in into our so-called preview environment for testing. Now for our website, we need to add the navigation menus so that it is visible to choose the menu item of adding customers. And we say here we need to be logged in in order to utilize the function. And we go to our preview. Here's our layout of our website. With our left side menu item, that needs to be refreshed. And our standard login. And on the left side, you should be able to see our customers item. And the layout we just made with customers on the left and the form to fill in on the right. Now the first customer we are filling in here will be defined as our own company which is called my company and the details that comes with it. Afterwards, we follow by customers that we want to invoice so that when we click for editing, the details on the right side is available for review and editing. 
And as with any customer, we have a lot of details to put in. And of course, very importantly, our bank details as this is an invoice application. Now, once we are saved, we will be seeing that on the left side as ourselves. And now we fill in for our first customer. So again, what we see on the right side is our form, which is a temporary place to record all our details. And here we go, our first customer stored on the left. And here, this is showing the user interface in order to, with the application uh, of, or the module of uh, handling users. With the various user roles. And he puts him himself as handling the first customer. Now we go to the next item, and that will be to create invoices so that we can invoice our customers. They are very similar, the customer segment and the invoice segment. And as you can see, the access to this development environment is through the web. And after an account has been registered in WEM, we need nothing further. Now we prepare the user interface again to display and handle the input with respect to invoices. So when we add the database, we've already prepared the database and helper flowcharts, and this time it takes to prepare them is not significant, especially when compared to traditional development. And we show our database through a data grid. Now again, we build up our form on the right to capture the invoice details. With our prepared form. And we can see when we are doing the links between our items, we have the tools 
available to help us as well. Now for a normal invoice, we have fields that we can manipulate with, and then there are fields just shown. And we can apply taxes and foreign currencies when we prepare this invoice. So if we choose in an invoice to include tax, we make the field pop up available to insert details around it. And here is the user interface to save or cancel our work. To yet again, transform our data from the form back into our database. And we go back to our flowchart and connect the service. And there we go, navigation. We need to add our menu item of invoices, creating invoices, our main menu on the left. making sure we are logged in. And then in our preview, once refreshed, there we go, invoices available. Now we can choose to create here our first invoice to our first customer based on a purchase order. We can make <laughs> complex payment terms, it's simple here. And so our first invoice is now stored. And of course, in every invoice, there are line items. So we move on to the next item linking our invoices with line items, building up a user interface with our interaction node. Now the styling here is similar to each other with what we saw before. However, the customizations of course are possible to suit any customer requirements. As you can see here, we have an easy drag and drop coupling between our database layout and the interaction node. Now you may observe that the line items do not go onto the navigation menu in a short while, but it's accessed through a button on our invoice screen page. So when we work with our item, show a database of the invoices. So that we can add line items to a specific invoice.
again. And here. And again here we build up the standard details for our line items. And in this year, I'll display the custom and invoice. The expression editor used here allows for complex conditions and calculations to be set up, as well as having a list of pre built functions that can be used. And here we go. We are showing the right in order to build our line item. And again, I'll help the user interface to choose either to pay it, cancel or save our work. You will see some fields are for read only and others can be updated. Easy customized in colors and size, etc. I'll be go back to connect our service. Now with these line items and the invoice with the details, we now in our invoice form can see that we have added the functionality to add line items into the invoice. There we go. And we can now create our first line items for our first invoice to our first customer. And as you can see with Australian dollars, as this is sitting in Perth, we have our first line item done on the left. Now building our second line item. There we are. And now, of course, with any invoices, we would like to produce PDF or the documentation to the invoice. In this case, we utilize the PDF format. So we use our already existing details 
and make that available for our customer user interaction node here to show with a already downloaded standard template of tax invoice. Back to connect our service. Here we go. And when we create such a PDF file, we can define what file names we want, subjects, etc. Making the user available with the download function. Connecting the search. And back to our invoices, we want to add the functionality on the invoice page to create the PDF. So back to our preview, we will then see the added functionality of creating the PDF. And by now being halfway around, we can actually now see what we have produced of our first invoice as was our main purpose today. Here we go. A nicely already existing template on our invoice. And now that's done. So next natural step is to produce payments to our invoices. Now we could also accommodate we could also accommodate payment into payment terms. But here we want to make ready for when our finance in forms of a payment has been done, we can produce the next step of receipts. So 
So in this case here, we more payment to the nine items we had before. From our invoice. So as you may have seen by now, from a single screen, this data model and the interaction node are accessible to each other in order to quickly build a user interface. Now, as we mentioned, this will be a manual uh, interaction of recording a payment, but the client paying would be able to utilize this very same application, though using the authorization module to control access and the viewable parts of the applications. Yet we have not applied this authorization style to our showcase. And for the details in a payment, following a standard again. And we need to save our work. Back to our flowchart. As you may have seen, these flowcharts provide a straightforward way to build the logic of the application in a step by step workflow. Yeah. Now, in our younger days in telecom and development and time to market, that would take easy six to 12 months, sometimes even longer. Now, here we're done. And we need to add our payment menu item to our website. And here we go. Our new payments interface. Assuming we have been informed yeah. the payment has been done, we register the payment. Into our database. There we go. Linking that to the invoice. And we can have two payments towards the same invoice. Now, obviously, with every payment, there will also be request for receipts. So we're building up our receipts portion here. Now, the receipts, the style is slightly different with payments on the left side. Here with the user interaction interface. So here on the left, we will enable the creation of receipts for invoice payments. Yeah. Yeah. 
So our payments database on the left side, and then on the right side, we're going to build the display of receipt that has already been issued. Now, once the application has been developed and tested in our development environment, there's a single click of a button to publish this application to a staging or a live environment. That takes about one to two minutes. This includes any updates to the application where the end user will see changes on the next refresh of their screen. Now with the receipts being produced, we would also like to preview them. Yeah. Yeah. And here is a template for our tax receipt. Also produce PDF. And again, here with the PDF format generation, we insert what file name we want to have, subject, etc. Now we are done with our seat part. Once we can review the created, this action completes the overall invoicing to receipt flow. We will now, in addition to this, show an integration with the simulated payment gateway to demonstrate how a client can make a payment through the application. And here we have our API interface showing the API documentation prepared for an external system for integration, in our case with a simulated payment gateway that shows the structure of the API integration called using a JSON structure. Here with our WIM uh, simulated payment gateway, 
we have the capability to integrate using REST or SOAP, or if needed, to build adapters for other protocols. Now with this simulator, we're using integration structure for the API interface, simulating that very exact same client making a payment using our platform. And when we work with the API, we need to handshake with the payment gateway, the information sent across and received. Which is set up here. Now you may not know this, I've done programming for 25 years, but after two or three years with WEM, look at the speed. And here we map from our payment gateway. Now, when we perform payment, it has been successful. With which values and success of it. Connecting our service. So on our payment page, we are adding the functionality of processing the payment. And this is the interaction with the payment gateway. And we go back to our preview. On our payments page. We have the process payment functionality available. Linked to. Here. Uh, we're registering a payment with that value into our database. Going back, seeing our payment gateway, and we have details of the very same payment. That is how easy it is done in five minutes on the simplified terms. Mm -hmm. Now that concludes. I'm, 
I'm going to take uh, just an extra minute to show how the look and style of the UI can be changed when there is a need to go beyond the already available templates and features within WIM. Um, I'm going to use the um, home page that we have as an example, very simple example of changing the look of the UI. I'm going to use a CSS script template and include that in the interaction node that we have here for displaying the US UI interface. This is the CSS script template. And I'll just include that templated script into the interaction node. Save it. And I've got something a little bit more attractive as a home page in terms of changing the look and the style uh, in, in the platform. Now that brings us to the conclusion of this uh, whole development that we were looking at. Thank you for your attention during this whole webinar. Um, I guess we're going to be open for Q&A, either using the chat or make a call. Martin yes. is managing the chat. Um, I haven't actually seen what he's been chatting about, though. No, Martin has been working really, really hard. So thank you very much, Des and Bo. Uh, really appreciate the pace at which you're building. Uh, I think my our accounts team takes more time to to fill in the invoicing details you know they take they take half a day to fill in all the invoicing details and and to build this in 45 minutes is incredible so thank you and thank you for all the questions i would like to take one question which is um the question around how is WEM different from other low code and no code players and uh, and some questions mentioned was out systems mendix microsoft power apps so that's a really good question and happy to have a follow-on conversation, but we have uh, gone into a competitive bid and these were yeah. the names that was along with WEM the final competition. So we can share as to why we won. And essentially it came down to few areas. One was we were the only low code player no code player that can build complex applications. So anything you can build on Java or .NET uh, for business application, you can build on web. Second, the data modeling, we were the only platform where the data modeling is drag and drop. Uh, web was the only platform uh, where, uh, no, where the workflows were drag and drop. Our integration capability was far superior. So few areas where we scored the points and won against some of the big players. One, uh, easy data modeling, easy drag and drop, can build very complex application, anything comparable to .NET or Java, and uh, superior integration capabilities, okay? And there are other questions uh, that, um, uh, Martin, would you like to take any of the questions? I'm just looking through some of the questions. Okay, okay, Martin cannot speak, so I will go ahead, get in. Uh, Bindu or, uh, or Hush, uh, you have any questions uh, which you can look which Martin hasn't answered. 
A lot of them are technical questions which Martin have answered. But I would uh, request if you have any follow-up discussion or a demo and you want to go through in more details, our marketing team will put up where we can reach out to all the um, questions uh, where you can reach out. You can reach out to me or to the Bindu, Harsh, uh, if we can look at the contact details that is just coming on the screen. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Thank you, team. This is a team that made this happen. So, really appreciate that. And these are the contacts. So, you can just click and go from here directly, or you can email any one of us, and we will be happy to respond. Uh, we really want to um, uh, have a more detailed discussions after this, and we want to make sure that you get the best out of the session. So, uh, most of the technical questions have been answered. I've covered the one of the business questions that came, um, and we will we look forward to getting more details from you and taking on to the next uh, discussion or a demo. I'll hand it over to Bindu. Bindu is our marketing head. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, this Bo Chenu. It was a lovely session. And in this pandemic situation, one thing doesn't stop or one thing doesn't have a pause, and that's the exhibit of ideas. And this in both showed the power of them. And it was lovely uh, seeing this and having a great audience, a great turnout. Uh, we are awaiting your responses, your feedbacks. So the, the feedback form will be sent to you uh, over email. And there are a lot of technical questions which came through. So we will be compiling all of them and sending it to you as well over email. And as far as the uh, the next session goes in the in the series, uh, we have John Wardle uh, taking over uh, on the 27th of May, uh, and he will be building a, a ticketing management system for a technical call center. Uh, and the, we will be sharing the details of that event as well, and uh, hopefully. Uh, like how Des and Bo have uh, managed to pull it off in 45 minutes, John will also do the same. So thank you all, and uh, uh, please do contact us in case of any queries or you just want to see a demo or get in touch with us. I will share the, uh, the email IDs again. You can just click over here and go to our contact us page and uh, talk to us. Thank you, and good day, everyone.